Virtual reality headsets may be the next big thing in gaming, but you're going to need actual games to play on them to make them more than just extremely heavy, not very attractive hats. Now that Phil Spencer has confirmed that Project Scorpio will support VR, you officially have our permission to get excited. Here are seven upcoming VR experiences that look like they'll be well worth abandoning the stupid real world for. How do you feel when you put on that mask? Are you hiding from the world? Or do you want the world to hide away from you? If you're anything like us, you've wondered what it would be like to be Batman. Then, made your own bat suit out of discarded car tires and baking trays, waited until nightfall, and. no? Yeah, us, us either, right? Just, just the first bit. Anyway, that's what Batman Arkham VR, currently a timed exclusive for PlayStation VR, is going to allow you to do. It puts you in the handmade Italian shoes of Bruce Wayne and hands you the keys to the Batcave, where you can don the Batsuit, take a look around, and then head to Gotham City to investigate a murder using the Dark Knight's augmented reality detective vision. At the moment, it's more of a two to three hour experience than a fully fledged game, but when the experience in question is being Batman, I think we're willing to let that slide. It's due out this October, so you've got plenty of time to practice the voice before before then. I'm Batman. We played an excellent virtual reality game at E3, the primary objective of which appears to be to lie right to your friends' faces, but it's okay because they can't see as they've got a VR headset on. The secondary objective is to use the powers of language that have been greatly depleted by years of Xbox Live voice chat, either to work out who amongst you is secretly a werewolf, or, if you are secretly a werewolf, to put the villagers off the scent. There's a variety of special abilities to help the villagers along, but mostly it's about being as persuasive as possible without sounding too suspect. It's based on a parlor game, and what it loses in poker face maintenance, it gains in neat VR mechanics, like the ability to lean to your left or right to have a private chat with other villagers. Pro tip, just asking, are you the werewolf, doesn't tend to provide much useful information. Team Xbox is Team Werewolf. Psych! <laughs> oh my. Sneaky werewolves. Captain's Log, Stardate 2016.165. Starship USS Aegis is preparing for her maiden voyage. We've gathered some of the most decorated officers in the Federation to test her limits and to prove her place among Starfleet's finest ships. Star Trek Bridge Crew is an online co-op game that, through the magic of VR, puts you in charge of a Federation starship called the Aegis. Well, not just you. Operating a spaceship is a tricky job, turns out, so it requires at least four people. Ship decloaking, activating shields. Okay, shields up. Shields up! There's the engineering officer who routes power around the ship, the tactical officer who handles the ship's defences, the helm officer who steers the thing, and the captain who I think just yells orders at people. Sweet gig. All of you need to be performing your roles and working together if you're to complete your mission of finding a new homeworld for the Vulcan people, and the Klingons are out to stop you because those guys have no chill whatsoever. Space is literally infinite, guys, let us have this one bit. Anyway, if this sounds like your idea of fun, A, you don't have long to wait as it's out this autumn, and B, you're in good company. Look how excited LeVar Burton is. <laughs> If you've ever dreamed of being able to fly, soaring above the world below, Eagle Flight is probably as close as you're going to get without some fairly hardcore gene therapy. Taking place in a Paris that's been reclaimed by nature, you steer your eagle by turning and tilting your head in what turns out to be a remarkably natural control method. At least until you tweak a nerve in your neck and have to go and have a lie down for a bit. Eagle Flight is enormous in its physical scale. Vertigo sufferers need not apply, but there's not a huge amount of game in there at the moment. A 3 vs 3 competitive capture the prey mode is currently diverting for a few sessions, but it's hardly Final Fantasy VII, is it? Assuming this isn't priced too highly though, the sheer freedom of swooping through Parisian monuments at dizzying heights makes this a novelty worth checking out. Just keep an ice pack or a trained masseur on standby. One of the major challenges of VR is how to deal with movement without either breaking the immersion or making players lavishly sick all over their new £400 headsets. Upcoming VR puzzle game Static deals with that by having you sat in a chair for the whole thing. The game itself takes the form of puzzle boxes that your hands are locked inside each day and that you must solve while under the watchful eyes of a mysterious doctor and his assistant. We're a sucker for puzzle games set in laboratories with antagonistic authority figures and mysterious stories, so even though we don't know much about Static, it's one we'll be keeping a close eye on. Or as close an eye as you can keep on anything when you're wearing a VR headset. The time of simply controlling a character is over. 
Don't just play the story. Star in it. Described as a first-person psychological thriller, Wilson's heart throws you into the Twilight Zone-style mystery of a man who wakes up to discover his heart has been replaced by a strange machine, and his quest to get his original ticker back while apparently being attacked by mermen. It's being developed by Twisted Pixel, the team behind Splosion Man and The Gunstringer, and features a starry Hollywood cast that includes former Robocop Peter Weller as main character Robert Wilson, along with Rosario Dawson and Alfred Molina, so we're expecting a level of polish that could help elevate this above other VR games we've seen so far. She's back. Resident Evil 7 is an actual proper horror game that's coming out on non-VR platforms including Xbox One. But as revealed in Sony's E3 conference, with the switch to an Outlast-style first-person perspective, the entire game can be played in virtual reality as well where available. That means hours of sustained virtual reality horror if your poor tortured heart can take it. The fact that you're inching slowly around the place rather than sprinting means, in theory, you should only be throwing up if you encountered a severed head or something. In practice, early reports are that the VR version is nauseating for all the wrong reasons. Capcom's confident it can iron out the issues though, and judging by the creepy PSN demo that's doing the rounds at the moment, this could be the VR game to have you tearing the headset off and hurling it at the wall. So the most expensive VR game then. Oh, and if you figure out what a dummy finger does, let us know, yeah? Those were the VR experiences we're looking forward to putting in front of our faces in the future. Which one did you most like the look of? Let us know in the comments and like and subscribe for more video game videos from outside Xbox.